Now, here we are looking at the lungs and the heart in between. And there we can see the great vessels. So now, this is on the right side. So that is my right lung and this is my left lung. We can all see that lungs are conical in shape. And you can see their apices. They are facing upwards and it's like a cone. And if you look at it anteriorly, the anterior border of the lung, see how sharp it is. So anterior border of my lung is very sharp. This is you're looking at the left lung. And where is the right lung? You can see the, the anterior border of my right lung is also sharp. And if you want to see the sharpness, just turn it and you can see the texture. And then my lung has surfaces and borders. So let's take the surfaces first. If you can pay attention on the sides of these lungs, you can see these obliquely going lines. So this surface anteriorly, laterally, as well as posteriorly. This is posterior, this is lateral, and this is anterior. I'm sure you can see these markings. So this surface anterior, lateral and posterior, we call it costal surface because it is in direct contact with the ribs. And then if you look at this rounded area, that is its posterior border. So this is directly in contact with the vertebrae. So my lung has a costal surface. Then if you look at the base, it is flattened to accommodate to be placed above the domes of the diaphragm. So we call this as the diaphragmatic surface. And then this inner face, which is facing towards the heart. I'm talking about this surface here and this surface here. So this is the mediastinal surface. So my lung has a mediastinal surface, both the sides, a costal surface, and a diaphragmatic surface. So these were the surfaces. Then we are talking about the borders. It has an anterior border, which is sharp. It has a posterior border. It is not that well defined. This is my posterior border. It is rounded. And then it has an inferior border. Look at it, it's again sharp. So this is the inferior border. So my lung has three surfaces, three borders. What are the surfaces? Costal surface. Diaphragmatic surface and mediastinal surface. And what are the borders? Anterior border, which is sharp. Posterior border, which is rounded. And the inferior border, which is again sharp. Now let's look at its apex. Is conical. This is the cervical part of the my lung. And that is covered by cervical pleura. We also call it cupula. And there we can see the great vessels. This is in the middle. You are looking at the trachea. Behind my trachea, you can see this esophagus. And there you can see very clearly my right common carotid and subclavian arteries. And on the left side, left common carotid and left subclavian artery. And there you can see this is my arch of aorta. Look at it, this arch of aorta is going transversely, then it's going backwards. It's not going like this. It's coming backwards. I can show you from the behind. See, it is coming backwards in this area. Then if you look at this heart, this is the, this surface is in contact with the sternum. So we call it sternocostal surface. This is the right border. And then this is the diaphragmatic surface. This is the apex of the heart. Now looking further, now how we determine the side of these lungs. But before going to the side of this lung, I like to show you something which is really important. Pay attention on this left lung. This is the anterior border, but we can see there is a gap here. This gap is, and there is the apex of the heart. So this gap is given a name, we call it cardiac notch. And down you can see a process, a hanging process, which resembles like a tongue. We call it lingula. And then we can see this is the right lung because it's on the right side. Apex has to be upwards. So now there we can see there are two fissures. One is going obliquely, one is going horizontally. And as a result, we have one, two and three lobes of the right lung. Coming to the left lung, 
classically it has only one fissure that divides into two lobes but sometimes you might find these aberrant type of things so that is not the only criteria on the basis of which you can differentiate the sides of the two lungs we need to look for other anatomical landmarks and that we need to be clear about the things now i'm showing you these two lungs these are the different samples and why i'm saying this is the right lung and why i'm saying this is the left lung so let's look into this factor let's start from the right so now as we said the lung is a conical structure you can see this is apex anterior border should be sharp i'm sure everybody can see that this is sharp posterior border should be rounded and inferior border is also sharp the lung has a costal surface anteriorly laterally and posteriorly and then it has a mediastinal surface and it has a diaphragmatic surface so there are three surfaces costal surface mediastinal surface and diaphragmatic surface for both the lungs then anterior border has to be sharp posterior border always rounded because it fits in the groove which is made due to the angulation of the rib and the vertebrae so this is posterior border and inferior border is again sharp so three border three surfaces now the apex is conical facing upwards now coming to the left lung same anterior border you can see the sharpness posterior border border which is rounded and inferior border you can see it's again sharp this is a mediastinal surface this is the costal surface you can see these rib markings well located mediastinal surface costal surface and diaphragmatic surface now what makes me and further we can show you here the cardiac notch and this is the lingula this lung is little different now why i am saying this is left lung only on the basis of that there is one fissure maybe i have shown you in the previous sample this is not the only criteria we should look for the apex should be upwards the costal surface should be placed it should be laterally and then mediastinal surface should be medially apex should be upwards base or the diaphragmatic surface should be downwards so now which hand i am holding it look at place your hand like this your thumb is on the hilum of the lung your fingers are representing the ribs and the tip of the finger is representing the sharp border so if i'm holding it like this this makes which hand is this this is my left hand if i try to hold it like that my thumb is not on the hilum of the lung so this is reverse if i try to place it like that oh anterior border is sharp posterior is rounded but is it apex no so now this makes me this is one of the simplest criteria on the basis of which i can say this is the left lung then definitely there is a cardiac notch there is a lingula when we come to the hilum of the lung there are so many different differences between the hilum of the right and left lung and now let's look at the right lung the right lung we have said same formula this round of my hand comes here thumb on the hilum and fingers are presenting representing the ribs and going anteriorly to the anterior sharp border you can see the costal surface of the right lung the mediastinal surface and the diaphragmatic surface the apex now this is the hilum of the lung now let me place these two lungs side by side so we can easily see on the mediastinal surface we can see there are certain grooves which has been shown very clearly on these lungs let's talk from this left lung first if you look at the mediastinal surface of this left lung you can see this big depression this is all because of this is where my arch of aorta lies and this is where my descending thoracic aorta there is a little bit contribution in this lower part where i have the esophagus and there if you can see this whole area is because of the heart this is the cardiac impression and which part of the heart that is my left ventricle is in contact in this cardiac impression of the heart now coming to the mediastinal surface of the right lung what we can see this is a cardiac impression this is where because which part of the heart is here my right atrium is here and this is you can see there is a depression here that is because of my 
superior vana khava. Now above to the hilum, there is an arch pattern. That is because of the azygous vein. So azygous vein arches over the hilum of my right lung. In contrary, the hilum of the left lung is arched by arch of aorta. So this is the azygous is here and superior vena cava is here. So you can see very clearly the azygous opens in the superior vena cava at a vertebral level T4. And then azygous is also present here and then this remaining portion, remaining part where I place my finger that is primarily in contact with the esophagus. Are we clear about that? So this is a cardiac compression. This is a groove for superior vena cava. This is the groove because of the azygous. Azygous is here also and this is for esophagus. On the left lung, this area we have arch of aorta. This area we have descending thoracic aorta. This cardiac compression primarily left ventricle. This cardiac compression primarily the right atrium of the heart. So these are main basic structures which are in close contact with the mediastinal surfaces of my lung. There are other structures but I am not going in so many details. After that then we will be looking into the hilum of the lung in the next video.